This video brought to you by Gamefly. Go to GameflyOffer.com slash HaloCanon for a 30-day free trial. Stick around to the end for more details. For the average Halo fan, the UNSC might as well be the primary governing body for humanity. However, there are a number of organizations that either once existed or do exist that make up the governing bodies of the Halo universe. The main governing body of humanity since the late 21st century has been the Unified Earth Government, or UEG. Formed in 2075 by the United Nations, the early UEG was created to solve issues related to governmental unification and colonizing new planets. As humanity began colonizing by the 22nd century, conflicts arose as new political ideologies emerged, notably the communist Kolsoviks and the Freiden Fascists. The UN deployed forces against these movements. In December 2163, the first space-deployed UN Marines were sent to Mars during what would later become the Mars Campaign. The next year, in 2164, the United Nations Space Command, or UNSC, was formally formed as the primary military arm of the UN. The UN also started absorbing the various remaining Earth governments, forming a central human government and a unified front against the Koslovics and Freiden forces. In 2170, the six-year-long interplanetary war came to an end. The UEG became the formal governing body for humanity, with the UNSC being tasked as its primary military, scientific, and exploratory force. By 2204, the UEG had full autonomy to maintain Earth's power over the growing number of colonies. In 2310, humanity began their first steps towards extrasolar colonization when the first colony ships were unveiled. To help govern the soon-to-be colonies, the UEG created two new organizations, the Colonial Administration Authority, or CAA, and the Colonial Military Administration, or CMA. As human expansion continued into the 25th century, the UNSC's Naval Command, or NAVCOM, and Unified Ground Command, or UNICOM, began encroaching on the CMA's territory, taking more direct roles in what would become the Inner Colonies. The CMA, in turn, shifted its attention to the newer Frontier Worlds, or the Outer Colonies. As the divide between Inner and Outer Colonies continued to grow, so did animosity between the UNSC and the CMA. As insurrection began to stir in the outer colonies, some CMA officials secretly supported the new insurrection. When this was discovered, the UNSC began shifting resources away from the CMA to NAV or UNICOM, effectively gutting the CMA. By the outbreak of the Covenant War, the CMA had been relegated to patrolling the most remote of colonies and providing logistical support to remote stations. By November 21st, 2525, not long after the start of the Human Covenant War, CMA forces were placed under NAVCOM or UNICOM control, and the CMA was fully absorbed into the UNSC. As the war continued, the UNSC established martial law, establishing itself as an emergency military government for the duration of the war. The UEG was fairly open to stepping down for the time being, but the CAA put up a bit of a fight. It was subsequently stripped of most of its power, though it seems to have still been around in some form as late as 2550, evidenced by the 2550 edition of the CAA Factbook. Intelligence agencies, too, were not spared during the Covenant War, with many, such as the CAA's Department of Colonial Security, being incorporated into ONI. By the end of the war, ONI would effectively be the only major intelligence agency left, having amassed enough resources to basically operate as its own military branch, rather than part of the UNSC's navy. With the end of the Covenant War, the UNSC surrendered its emergency powers, and a civilian government once again took control of humanity. In January of 2553, Dr. Ruth Chart was elected president of the UEG, an office she held as late as 2558. Though no longer the governing body by any means, the UNSC did experience some difficulty shedding its governmental responsibilities. As such, a shadow government of sorts, largely directed by ONI, has since formed within the UEG. In addition, though the CAA would remain around in some form following the Covenant War, the UNSC itself retained considerable influence over the surviving colonies. The UEG itself is a representative democracy, with an elected president, a senate, and a number of offices and ministries familiar to many modern Western cultures. And that covers the basics of human governance in the Halo universe. There are a number of nuances to the way these four main bodies worked and interacted over the centuries, but this covered the surface level stuff. So, what did you think of the video, and what do you think of the governing bodies in the Halo universe? Let me know in the comments below. 
Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give a like and consider subscribing and sharing this video around. Also consider checking out Gamefly, with over 8,000 new releases and classic games for current and previous gen consoles, and even some older consoles, Gamefly is a great way to try tons of games without buying them. Go to GameflyOffer.com slash HaloCanon to start your 30-day free trial.